My name is Lucas Levy Keppel, and for the next five days, I will be cycling across the state of Missouri following the Katy Trail. Ah. Hello, friend humans. I'm here at the start of the journey in Lee's Summit, Missouri. About to get on the uh, Amtrak here and ride over to St. Louis before I take the Katy Trail all the way back. It's exciting. I had to ride about six miles to get here. I'm all warmed up. Now I get to be, get to be on the train for the next, you know, six hours or so. I should be able to get it. I just need to put this down somewhere. There we go. Thank you. This is where you said, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. Okay, you got it. Thank you kindly. Woo! It's a lot easier getting it up than getting it down there. Good grief. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it. I have arrived <laughs> at one end of the journey. I'm here um, in Kirkwood at the uh, Kirkwood Amrak, uh, Amtrak station and about to head out uh, to get to the Katy Trail because just getting to the train station is not enough. I've got to get to the trail itself. And uh, it's about 1.30 in the afternoon. I'll be fighting some daylight issues. Obviously, it's a little uh, chilly and windy, but uh, that's okay. That's part of the adventure. Um, not sure that there's going to be a campsite tonight either. Uh, when I was checking on the train, it looked like the campsite might be all booked up or may not be open. So I've got a couple options that I'll check out when we get closer, but always exciting to have complications this early in the trip. In any case, let's uh, get to the trail so we can start riding the trail. So a moment ago, I was uh, up on Olive Street on the way through Crave Kerr and managed to catch the edge of the tripod with my leg. And wouldn't you know it, I broke the tripod leg right off of the, uh, the selfie stick. 
So I'm going to not have a uh, tripod for the entire trip on the Katy Trail unless I can find a place that has it. So it may be all handheld and for that I apologize. But uh, you know, <laughs> what, what, what kind of a trip would it be if everything went according to plan? Yeah, I don't think I'm 44 tons. Should be okay. farmland somewhere. And now is not that time. Trails is excited for me to get here as I am to get to it. Here it is, Katie Trail. So I'm still fairly close to the highway where that was the bridge over the Missouri River. I love that the trailhead was right next to the Missouri River crossing. Somehow that just seems perfect. The trail is so pretty. All of the changing trees, the leaves on the trees. But up at the bridge, there was a sign that said Family Arena. And I have some real questions about what the Family Arena is. I'm guessing it's not a place of gladiatorial combat. I don't think that's legal in Missouri. Of course, in Latin, the word arena merely means sand. So maybe there's a family beach or something over here that someone is feeling all classy or classical anyway. <laughs> Wasn't sure what the surface of the road would be like. Surface of the trail. But it's nice, no problems here.
morning, friend humans. I made it into Defiance last night. Didn't quite make it all the way to where I was hoping to make it to, just outside Augusta. But uh, making it to Defiance is a pretty good first day with, you know, losing the tripod and everything. It's a beautiful morning today, though. A little chilly. Got down to about 38 last night, which was, you know, colder than I was promised. <laughs> but fortunately, the, uh, the quilt worked a treat. It was amazing to be there. I, I even did a thing that I've never done before and covered over my head to warm up my head. When I was pulling into Defiance, I passed a bar uh, or a brew pub, I guess is the technical term, I passed a brew pub that was called Good News. And I thought, oh, this is good news indeed. I'll stop here and have a bite to eat. Uh, looked like they had pizza and burgers on the menu just as I was riding by. Well, bad news for good news was that they were closed on Mondays, so I didn't actually get my, my good news treat. But, uh, you know, I did make it back to the camp. It was completely dark and made stroganoff for dinner. So sometimes you have to have stroganoff. <laughs> Looking forward to getting back on the road. Obviously, it is morning. Um, I'm going to have a little bite to eat here and then uh, head out. Because I stopped a little early yesterday, we've got a little bit of extra uh, time to make up today um, to make it to the, the Turner Katy Roundhouse, which is our goal for today. So... That's going to be some 70 miles. Here's hoping that we make it all the way. This is just absolutely stunning. Looking over at the Missouri River, the bluffs beside, and the trail ahead. This is exactly the kind of thing I wanted to see on this trip. Now much of this trip follows the path of the Lewis and Clark expedition. They were on the river itself, and since the railway, and now this path, follows the river too. It's kind of neat to think about how Lewis and Clark and, the, and Sacagawea and all of the others coming along here, scouting it out for the new United States, trying to figure out what in the world they were going to do with all this territory. Back at Madsen, the trailhead, there was information about Daniel Boone moving out here to Missouri. Apparently, he was having such a difficult time in Kentucky <laughs> that uh, he asked the Spanish for a land grant, and they gave it to him. It was across the Mississippi River, which meant that it was no longer in the U.S. territory, and he was allowed to have it. <laughs> Unfortunately, just a few years later, the U.S. acquired that territory, and it became the Missouri Territory. And they had no idea what to do with the Spanish land grant. They'd only dealt with English land grants and some Dutch ones as well. It took an act of Congress to recognize it and allow Boone and his family to have the land that they'd settled. I say this with a smile and a laugh, but remembering that the land that they settled was land that belonged to native tribes, and that a lot of the troubles that Boone was having in Kentucky was with those native tribes who were understandably upset about him taking their land. I don't know, it adds something to it.
Nice cold kickstand. Good morning. Coming up on my first tunnel of the Katy Trail. Granted, it's just underneath the road, but still. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, ole. Ole, 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 ole. It's a shout out to Ryan Van Duzer. Pretty big blow down. Let's see what we can do. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I feared. Magical. Lost Creek.
Hello, I'm here outside McKittrick in Missouri. I'm about to take a little jaunt over for lunch. Can't believe how far we've come today. It's been 40 miles or so already and uh, another 35-ish to go. More than halfway on the day. Seems like a good time to break for lunch. And uh, Herman is a wonderful German town. They have the Oktoberfest going on uh, throughout October, which is a little strange because it's supposed to be in September, but we won't get into that too much. Uh, but I'm going to go in, get some nice German food, refuel for this uh, particular half of the day, and I just am amazed at how it's going. I just passed the 100 mile marker, although that's 100 miles from the Mississippi River, not 100 miles of the trail. Uh, it just got me thinking about how far this trail goes and how long it's been here and all of that. And I'm just so excited to be uh, on the trail. And it will be nice to have some food. <laughs> now and then need to take a break on the trail get out of the saddle sit down who I thought that I'd be more energized coming out of lunch but instead I'm seeming to have the same thing that happened in school <laughs> I ate lunch and then I got real tired <laughs> so I've come about nine miles from Herman Ah, only another 22-ish in the day, which is not bad. Quite honestly, I can make 22 miles. I know I can do it, but I got to keep my energy up. So gummy bears. I don't know why I hadn't thought of this before. Gummy bears are packed with energy and they pack pretty well. It's not like they care if they freeze or melt, they'll still work just the same. Plus, I keep my, reminding myself that every, you know, liter of water I drink and every gummy bear I eat, well, that's weight I don't need to be pushing or carrying on the bike. Instead, it's in me where it's doing more, more good <laughs> at that time. This is the Standing Rock. As you can tell, it lives up to its name, stands kind of on its own. On this rock, mysteriously, every time the Missouri River floods, another line is added onto this rock with the flood level marked out clearly, at least clearly at the time of the flood. I had to do a little bit of reconnaissance to find even one of the flood markings on it. But I believe... I believe this red here is a flood marking also. Still, considering we are a mile and a half from the Missouri River, it's pretty impressive that it can flood that high out here. <laughs> I 
I've talked about these mileposts along the way, uh, how they've been counting from the Mississippi River. It's really nice that at mile 125 exactly is where Mocane is. Now, Mocane is a town named for the Missouri, Kansas, and East Railroad. Uh, they had a different name when they were a steamboat town on the river, but after a flood, they rebuilt at the location of where the railroad was coming through. Well, they uh, had a contest to change the name of the town. Mocane won, and then Mocane was incorporated into the Missouri, Kansas, Texas, or MKT Railroad. The MKT Railroad is what gives the Katy Trail its name. The KT is the Kansas, Texas, and we're in Missouri, so I assume that they just thought, you know that this is the Missouri, Kansas, Texas. <laughs> Turner Katie Shelter. Well, hello there. It's never too early for a tour. Let me show you around. Come on in. Now begins the adventure part of this trip. For that, is the normal cycling bridge to get across on the Katy Trail. And the rains have started. Come on in. 